you see the nearest star as it was about four years ago. Hello, I'm a particle physicist. That means that I find out about the universe by smashing together teeny tiny particles. And I'm a cosmologist, which means that I find out about the universe by looking at the universe. So brace yourselves, because a satellite called Planck has been staring out into space for a while now, and in March it's going to tell us about the Big Bang, which is the start of the universe itself. 2012 was, it's fair to say, all about the particle physics. As I was saying, particle physicists like myself have been smashing together teeny tiny particles at the Large Hadron Collider in order to recreate the conditions that existed just after the Big Bang. When you collide particles together, you force a lot of energy into a very small space. That makes things very hot and very dense, very much like the early universe itself. But astronomers can go one step better. Instead of trying to recreate the early universe, we are looking straight at it. Light travels very fast, but not instantly, so like anything, if it has to go a long way, it takes a long time to get there. If you look at the moon, you see it as it was one second ago, and if you look at the nearest star in the night sky, that's much further away, so the light takes longer to reach you, and in fact, you see the nearest star as it was about four years ago. That's the thing of astronomy. You're always looking backwards. Right. But in this case, looking backwards is exactly the point. We're pretty sure the universe came into existence around 14 billion years ago. Look at something that's sufficiently far away, and it takes all of those 14 billion years for the light to reach you. So you see things as they were at the start of time itself. That's how the Planck satellite is going to tell us more about the Big Bang. Planck has been in space since about 2009, patiently gathering light from the furthest reaches of the cosmos and, therefore, the earliest times. This light is known as the cosmic microwave background. Microwaves are just a form of light. The thing is, the Big Bang has already happened. That means that Planck has to scan the whole sky in order to scrape up whatever remnant light that it can. Now, with the Large Hadron Collider, things are very different. We have complete control. We can collide protons and lead ions at the highest energies ever achieved in a laboratory. And the higher the energy that we can collide the particles at, the further back in time we can effectively see. But the picture that the Planck satellite takes of the Big Bang is telling us about physics at perhaps a trillion times higher energy than the highest the Large Hadron Collider can deliver. And that means that, to compete, Tom would need a super-sized gargantuan Hadron Collider. Sure, the bangs that we make at the Large Hadron Collider aren't going to be as big as, well, the big one. But we can do billions of collisions every single second. And with each one of those collisions, we get a fresh insight into how the early universe might have behaved. With the Planck satellite, well, you've only really got one shot. But the difference is that Planck takes a picture of the actual Big Bang. So, for instance, if you were to see circular ripples in the light that it's measuring, you might be able to infer that two separate universes have collided. And that's just one example. The point is, whatever one shot Planck takes, it's historically accurate. But it's still only one shot. With the billions of collisions that we make in the Large Hadron Collider every single second, we can find out about things like the quark-gluon plasma, a primordial form of matter that existed at the very early universe. To do that, we surround our billions of bangs with thousands of super-fast digital cameras. Whereas with Planck, instead of looking inwards at many tiny microbangs, we look outwards at the one enormous Big Bang. So in many ways, the Planck satellite is like an inside-out Large Hadron Collider. Right, an inside-out, historically accurate Large Hadron Collider. Yeah. An inside-out, historically accurate, one-shot Large Hadron Collider. Right, an inside-out, historically accurate, one-shot gargantuan super-sized Hadron Collider. And that is why we're looking forward to the Planck results in March. 
So if you'd like to hear more from us and more about the Planck satellite, subscribe here. Go on. It'll be good. <laughs>